Mr. Teen Muscle Fitness. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've done some uploads and videos, but I'm going to try to get back at that. I've just kind of had a busy school schedule. That being said, uh, this video is going to be dedicated to uh, providing um, some facts about creatine. Um, so as you know, I'm a high school student, and uh, just being in high school, there tends to be a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of misinformation um, about supplements um, that uh, people take and um, I would say probably the most misunderstood supplement um, from at like f misinformation among athletes my age you know, you know early to late high school um, even middle school would be uh, about creatine so I just want to do this video and um, take some time to kind of uh, debunk what I would feel the top uh, five myths about creatine are. Um, so with that being said, let's get going. The first myth that I hear all the time, that people try to tell me all the time, is that creatine is a steroid. Uh, there's an anabolic steroid. There's really two. There's really two ways to debunk this myth, and one is from strictly a chemistry standpoint. The others, from a physiolo physiological standpoint, um, uh, if you've ever taken chemistry, you know that uh, different classes of compounds will have different um, structures, uh, chemical structure. Each each compound, every compound, I should say, has its own chemical structure. Uh, with that being said, um, steroids. Anabolic steroids, um, whether it's pro hormone or just absolute testosterone, all have the same general chemical structure. Uh, I'm not going to go into exactly what it is, but it's not it's not the same as creatine. Creatine is not a hormone. It's not a steroid. Uh, what it is actually is um, I think it's uh, uh, made up of like an amino acid or something. I forget what it is exactly, but it is not a, it's not a hormone, so it's not a steroid. And then um, from what it does in your body, um, steroids uh, increase protein synthesis. Creatine alone uh, does not directly um, increase protein synthesis, which leads me to my second myth, uh, which is a lot of people uh, in high school tell me, oh, uh, you take creatine, that just means you're, oh, that just makes it so much easier to build muscle. Creatine is, um, even though if it's not a steroid, it basically does the same thing. Um, that is false. I think there's a lot of misinformation about what exactly creatine does. A lot of people think that creatine, like anabolics, increases protein synthesis when, while it may have an, uh, an indirect correlation to um, increase muscle gains, it alone will not increase protein synthesis. Um, to understand what creatine does, you have to understand how the body um, essentially fuels its muscles uh, and exercise. There are three, there are three uh, energy systems that your body uses. They are the phosphagen system, the um, system which will use glucose, um, and then the system which uses um, fatty acids. Um, so, what you need to know uh, how creatine relates to that is creatine um, affects your phosphagen system. Uh, the phosphagen system, uh, without, without getting too technical, is what's going to fuel short bursts uh, of, uh, of um, muscle force. So, the phosphagen system is basically what you use when you're doing a set of a weightlifting activity or uh, doing a sprint or um, in sports like football where you'll have you know 10 seconds of intensity followed by a 30 second rest the phosphagen system is going to be the most explosive energy system for your body and it doesn't what's the, the great thing about phosphagen system is it doesn't have the uh, lactic acid um, side effects and stuff like that that being said naturally your phosphagen system can only um, it only it runs out in about eight seconds or so from what I've read. So by taking creatine, uh, you you can increase um, the amount of creatine in your muscles, 
which there uh, which therefore maxes ma maximizes your phosphagen system. So really, all creatine does is it gives you an extra by taking creatine. All you're going to do is get an extra second or two of um, that being able to use that phosphagen system for energy, which um, that's what creatine does. It doesn't directly increase protein synthesis. Now, with that being said, creatine is going to be allow you to work out uh, harder, maybe get a rep or two more in each set, and because you're uh, being able to put forth more force and you know get in maybe an extra rep or two, that will increase uh, the stimulus on your muscle, which may increase your overall gains. The third uh, myth I want to address uh, that I hear a lot in the high school setting is that creatine um, causes uh, liver or not liver causes kidney damage and this one is uh, a myth that is um, if we just take a couple minutes to look at the facts you can uh, wipe right off the table so um, here's what people use to fuel this myth um, and people who don't take creatine, um, kidney damage, um, a sign of kidney damage is increased uh, creatine metabolite uh, excretion through urine. Um, so basically, um, if you're taking more creatine than your body needs, you're going to be, common sense says that all the excess is just going to get pissed out. So what people will do is they'll see, oh, they've got all this extra creatine metabolite being peed out, and and people who aren't taking creatine, that's a um, that's a red flag for hey, they've got kidney damage. But really, all it means is that you're taking um, you're taking more than your body needs, and you're just pissing it out. If you're um, taking the five grams of, you know, the usual recommended five grams daily, you're not gonna have that. And even if you take more than that, it's not harmful to you. Um, it's not a sign of kidney damage. With that being said, uh, any substance uh, in excess can kill you. I mean, for goodness sakes, you could you could um, get water intoxication from drinking too much water. So it just kind of takes a little bit of common sense on the user's part to know that um, you need to take things at the right dosage and that taking... You know, 50 grams of creatine a day isn't going to maximize your creatine stores any more than taking five. So just use common sense on that and you can avoid that problem. The next point I want to talk about is um, I hear all the time people say, uh, um, especially I wrestle, so I hear wrestlers, wrestling people tell me this all the time. I say, oh, you shouldn't take creatine. It's going to make you hold extra water and, you know, it's going to be hard for you to make weight in wrestling. This this point is probably like one of the stupidest ones I've ever heard. Creatine, if you look at how it actually works, is not going to cause that much water retention. It's going to be very minimal. What does make you blow it up is when you're taking creatine with, um, you know, 70, 80 grams of dextrose. Something like taking a product like Celtec, which has all the extra sugar. It's not the creatine that's making you blow it up. It's all that extra sugar which is actually making you blow it up. So that that's just a myth kind of easily debunked right there. The last point I want to make um, about creatine would be uh, creatine timing. Uh, and there's really two subcategories to this one. And that would be uh, whether or not you need to cycle creatine and what time of the day you need to take creatine. So... Um, if you look through a variety of uh, you know muscle building magazines or even YouTube channels, you'll you'll hear people saying stuff like, "Oh, you uh, you need to cycle creatine. Um, if if you keep taking it, uh, your body will uh, shut down its natural production, and uh, you know it will it will be bad for you. You'll burn out your creatine receptors. Stupid shit like that." Um, if, if you knew anything about creatine, you would understand just how ridiculous of a claim this is. Um, creatine is found in almost all animal uh, products, any type of meat, anything like, anything like that. So saying that you have to cycle creatine would be like saying uh, you need to stop eating meat for a month so that you're not getting creatine from that either. It's just ridiculous. Um, it, it's and there's really no data to support that you absolutely have to cycle creatine. Um, 
the next thing about timing is uh, when you actually have to take it. I've heard plenty of people say, oh, you need to take it with your pre-workout because it helps you during your workout. Um, creatine, take, it doesn't really matter when you take your creatine. Um, it could be before, it could be after your workout, it could be before you go to bed. It doesn't matter because it's not going to have a that direct immediate impact of something like a stimulant would uh, as far as pre-workout goes. It's really it's not going to get absorbed and into your muscles and give you uh, that much greater of an impact if you take it pre-workout versus taking it after your workout or any other time of the day. So um, I hope this video has helped you um, maybe uh, put aside some um, concerns you may have had with creatine from rumors you've heard or myths you've heard and uh, I'll probably do a couple of videos in the future talking more specifically about the advantages of creatine. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please comment, like, subscribe, um, tell your friends about it and uh, have a great day.